Hi folks, it's Danny at Bradley James Classics and today's classic is a Land Rover lightweight or air portable from 1973. Now this is a super example, uh, they're highly sought after and, and the collectors love to have them in their collections because despite them having made um, a fair few thousand of these, not a huge amount remain in existence and they are an interesting vehicle with an interesting history. Now this particular uh, lightweight um, was, was manufactured in 1973. It came out of service in 1990 and the, and the vehicle itself had remained off the road for a number of years. It only ever went in for the one MOT, which I believe was either in about 19, um, I'm sorry, in 2019, where it passed with no advisories. So that gives you an idea of the condition uh, having been fully restored from the chassis up. There is a real host of new parts that, uh, that were fitted at the time of this restoration, but it does remain pretty much original looking um, it does have some additions and I'm going to run through a little about the history of these lightweights and then we can talk about this particular vehicle and um, what you can expect to see when you come and have a look now the vehicle itself is in super condition it's a pleasure to drive I think it's got a very good setup in that it's got overdrive it's a two and a quarter uh, petrol engine and because it is a lightweight it does go quite well um, it starts very easily it drives perfectly well and it is essentially a it feels you know as good as new the engine it's uh, pulls very nicely and it's capable of doing 60 miles an hour down the motorway um, not that you probably want to be using this as a motorway cruiser but just so you know you 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 can actually do a reasonable speed in the car now it is pretty quirky and to tell you a little about the history of the Land Rover it was built for the military um, it was used by all three of the main um, military um, arms um, and it had a particular design principle so it had to be lightweight because it was loaded into uh, aeroplanes side by side it needed to fit onto a shipping pallet and therefore it was necessary to reduce the chassis and axle size by four inches so you could have one of these side by side on some sort of uh, uh, aircraft that was capable of carrying these Land Rovers. Also the weight it had to be no more than 2,500 pounds, which is about 1.1 and a bit uh, kilos, um, thousand kilos, uh, and that was because of the um, Westland Wessex carrying capacity. Now, you could change the weight a little because one of the factors of the vehicle is that the doors really can be taken off in moments, uh, as can some of the panels to make the vehicle um, semi-rebuildable when it arrives at the other end. And that occasionally was done to help with the payload. So a design principle was a vehicle that was gonna be quick and easy to work on. It needed that um, slightly uh, less wide wheelbase, reduced by four inches. And this is known as the half ton. So uh, the engineers at Land Rover Special Vehicles did have a brief from the military and that was to create uh, a vehicle that pretty much was based on the initially the Series 2A Land Rover and then it was a Series 3 Land Rover like this one is and they did pretty much do away with all of the body panels and they made a unique version just for the military and this is it. So they are well loved, collectors love them. Uh, they've got great off-road capabilities due to the uh, setup of them. So they are a, a serious bit of kit. They have the Land Rover two and a quarter 
well proven petrol engine they're about 73 brake horsepower and the benefit of a series 3 over a earlier model which was the 2a is that you have synchro mesh in second gear as well as third and fourth where the earlier uh, vehicle didn't have synchro mesh in second gear uh, so a slightly revised gearbox some of the electrics are a little different you have an alternator rather than a dynamo you have a multi-function switch that can beep a horn flash the lights as well as indicate that's a little different um, it does retain the metal dashboard of the um, sort of 2a if you can see that in the middle there and she is in lovely condition really easy to drive and you know for all intents and purposes a, a perfect little usable Land Rover now it does come this is what this is here it does actually come with a, um, a canvas which runs over the cab and you have a back window which would go here and then it straps over the top and then we've got uh, the roof comes down into here so it's obviously fully watertight and then you can have a back open there are some that have uh, full length canvases when you have a series of what they call hockey bars or hockey sticks and that's what uh, holds the rest of the roof if you wanted the full canvas rather than this uh, open affair it doesn't take long to take this tailgate off here and here in fact you can just lift it off easy access and this one as you would imagine does have a tow bar now um, it was rebuilt from the chassis upwards with multiple new parts from, um, fitted as required um, that was done in 2016 it's only gone for the one MOT in 2020 which it passed without advisories and the engine starts very easy at the turn of a key pulls really well um, and a pleasure to drive there's a few subtle upgrades now obviously these wheels wouldn't have been as standard these are wolf wheels and there's virtually new um, tires fitted to them and these um, INSA turbo tires Ranger tires are perfect on a vehicle like this now there's four of them they're all virtually as new um, it's great because it also has overdrive now that's what's going to help you doing uh, a long run and while I'm showing you these bits and pieces I point out any other differences I can think of to have conventional seat belts we've got these hoops fitted here so you've got inertia belt seats now this is a bit of a bonus because for those who know if you didn't have this extended filling neck here in the base of the cab you would have to do what they did in the old days and the seats uh, used to have to be lifted up and then you'd have fuel tanks so this has actually got civilian fuel tanks in which can be um, accessed via this filling neck here that's a bonus and Land Rover steering wheels are usually pretty big well this one's got a Triumph Dolomite as you can see steering wheel which is a little lighter um, a smaller I should say rather than lighter and that does make this Land Rover uh, quite accessible for those who care about the gap between there and there if you know what I mean um, four speed manual gearbox with the synchro mesh in everything but first and then we have the ability to go into uh, four wheel drive which is a a sprung loaded button here we can be in high and low and then neutral and as soon as we go into low that automatically engages four wheel drive and we've got overdrive as well um, in this particular vehicle you can top up the gearbox beyond that bung um, here's our switch gear and someone has kindly marked up what does what so there shouldn't be any reason for not guessing where the horn is uh, or the wipers we've got a temperature gauge which is fitted over here and here are the original uh, plates from Land Rover and there we see here and here which is lovely to see um, the seats are in lovely condition uh, overall it does look like a freshly restored Land Rover still albeit it's been five years since this restoration was carried out it's showing just over 50,000 miles uh, I know that the uh, engine does have an unleaded conversion carried out so it's capable of run, running on unleaded fuel however with the new E10 fuel my customers 
run these on uh, the super unleaded because they don't like the damage that can be um, set about to their uh, rubber hoses and seals or you can use an additive. Now it really is in excellent condition. I've made a few notes just to see if I can tell you anything else about this particular vehicle. Uh, it is of course tax and MOT exempt. I think we've run through uh, the running gear pretty well. We spoke about the differences on a Series 3 compared to an earlier vehicle. Um, I do have a few notes uh, from the previous owner, just highlighting, the, uh, he did mention the, um, uh, the, the chassis and the bulkhead is perfect. Um, he can cruise at 60 miles an hour on the motorway thanks to the overdrive. I think we've, dis we've discussed the extended filler in the truck bed so you don't have to lift those seats and fuel her up. So the car needs for nothing. It starts on the key. It's a complete pleasure to drive actually and it, it does go rather well. Um, now it's a little bit difficult to open these cars with one hand but if there's a way I can open this up for you I promise I'll have a go um, otherwise I'll be making a photograph for you ah, I can't quite do it but as you can see I'm just trying to open up that bonnet but I will take a photograph of the uh, engine bay for you it's all very lovely there well um, this Land Rover is in stock um, it drives perfectly well it's ready to go all the vehicles we sell do go through our workshop so we can give her the once over before she leaves they leave us in clean good working order uh, we do own a garage here in the Hampshire countryside where we fix up classic cars and repair classic cars for our customers we also offer a transportation service so we can have this lovely old lightweight delivered anywhere in the UK at a competitive price and we are happy to take in a part exchange of either your classic, modern or light commercial vehicle. If you tell us what you've got, we can certainly let you know if it's something that we can uh, do a deal on to facilitate buying one of our classics. I will take a, a slow walk round just to show you some aspects of the car and hope you can see that despite being a early 70s Land Rover the vehicle is in good condition it is worth pointing out that I'm afraid there's never been a spare wheel which is usually mounted on the top here and you can see that this fella here is used for securing it so maybe in the past it wasn't secured and pinched but I, I don't know for sure so uh, you will need to source a spare wheel for this um, there's the doors the doors lock and you've only got to unbolt from here and these have got rising hinges and you just literally lift those doors off really quick if you wanted to. She's in great condition back here. There's been a little bit of a extension on the arches here just so it can cater these extra wide wheels. And just looking at the back here, you can see this is all in lovely condition. Nice and original. And there's the seat belts which are all mounted in there. We're looking very good. And I'm just walking around this whole Land Rover for you just to see, show you what I can see and hopefully this all comes out nicely on the video. I can assure you we've had this oh, ramp and let's just give you an idea what it's like underneath. As you can see, this is um, all absolutely rock solid. Ah. I can only really show you so much. Here you are welcome to have this car inspected, of course. We do have four ramps in our workshops. So folks, it's uh, a Land Rover lightweight series three from 1973, showing 50,000 miles on the odometer. It drives particularly well with its new tires drive model two and a quarter petrol engine with a four-speed manual gearbox we have her in stock 
please contact us while we do have her in stock because I think you might be disappointed if you miss this one. It really is in lovely condition. And the great thing about it is that it's actually been used since it's been rebuilt, which is great news because often some of these cars, they get rebuilt, they don't get used. And then you've got the teething problems to deal with. Not so with this car, it's actually a lovely old landy to drive, a real pleasure. And uh, you'd be very welcome to come and have a look and make sure she's for you. Thank you for watching the video, folks. That's Danny at Bradley James Classics, signing out.